Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and we're here today in downtown Lakewood, and we're here today with Lakewood Mayor Ed Fitzgerald. Thanks for meeting with us today. My pleasure. You're also running for Cuyahoga County Executive. Right. Uh, you had a background as an FBI special agent. You were on Lakewood City Council for a while. Now you're mayor. Oh, right. What is that going to take should you be elected to uh, executive position? What have you learned here? Well, uh, being a mayor, mayor, yeah, being a mayor, I think, is a great uh, training ground, really, to be a county executive because I serve as the executive as this city. I work with a city council, and we have to work collaboratively. One of the ways that Cleveland hasn't worked, unfortunately, is you've had too much... Right. Might as well not even try to talk over that. But we've had too much time where you've got a council and a mayor that are fighting all the time. And I think we've really done a pretty good job trying to build a consensus here. Right. And that means you can't try to take credit for everything. You've got to have partnerships. <laughs> right. You've got to give people credit even when they don't deserve it sometimes. And gotcha. I think we've done that. We have a pretty good success story here. You've only been mayor for a short time, less than one term. A lot of the folks years, here yeah. are saying uh, you haven't even finished out your term here. What does that say for your, your long-term commitment to, uh, well, to politics? Well, my commitment to Lakewood, my family's been here almost 100 years, and so we're not, we're not going anywhere. Um, and we set out a few goals that we wanted to achieve as mayor, and most of those have been achieved. I mean, you can always, you can always stay longer and try to do more. But the things we really focused on, Thomas, were... We wanted to have a law enforcement initiative, which we did. Our crime rate did drop significantly in the last few years. We had a fiscal crisis. We took our biggest deficit. We turned it into our biggest surplus in two or three years. And we also tried to do what's happened up and down our commercial corridors, which is we've had a really a kind of a renaissance of commercial activity that the city was a partner with. We don't deserve all the credit for it. The private sector does, too. But we're a big part of that. You're also a big believer in uh, regionalism. You've, you've uh, suggested a regional collaboration director uh, to be in your staff. But there are problems with regionalism, as we know. Everyone likes to toss the word around. I'd like right. to know what the word means to you. Well, what it doesn't mean is it doesn't mean that individual cities are going to give up their, their rights or their privileges that they have under the Constitution. Because the downside to me of regionalism is that if government gets too big, it becomes unresponsive. I mean, there's too much of a, of a barrier between the individual citizen and their regional representatives. So to me, it's not about taking away power from all the small communities. That's not what it's about. I'll give you a specific example of what I'm talking about. The city of Lakewood initiated what's called a, a, an alternative energy improvement district that you might have read about in the paper. And right. I, I don't know if Cool Cliven covered it or not. I think you guys did. It's very exciting. It's a consortium between entering suburbs, the city of Cleveland, the Port Authority, that's going to help finance alternative energy, whether it be geothermal, right. wind, solar, what have you. And that's a new initiative. Those, right. are, those are a little easier, but we'll also exactly. talk about uh, saving money and consolidating sure. services. That's been harder to do, even here in Lakewood, where we used the regional income tax uh, authority for a while. Yeah. That's been brought back under the wings of, of individual right. cities like Lakewood. Look. So it's not easy to do regionalism, correct? It's, and it's not a panacea. There are times where it works and there's times where it doesn't work. There are times where a city does its own service best. So it's not like you always have to default. What you want to do is you want to give people options. So if they want to be part of an alternative energy improvement district, they should do it. If they want to be part of the county board of health, they should do it. If we want to form things like, let's say, a countywide IT consortium, which I think would make sense instead of having 59 different IT departments, right. then they should do it. But they have the freedom to choose that. It's the county government's job, I think, what it should be their job is to, do, is to provide those, those policy options, and they're not doing that right, right. now. You've also suggested uh, the third frontier here in Ohio has been very successful yes. in funding high-tech groups. Right. Northeast Ohio right. has gotten the lion's share, and we've really made off with this. Mm -hmm. You've suggested a fourth frontier for venture capital funding. Right. Sounds like, again, a great idea. Where does this money come from, though? Because it's not really spelled out in your plan. Um, you know, the new charter requires the county government make economic development a priority. It doesn't say where the money is supposed to come from. The biggest source of new revenue that we've identified so far is from the casino revenues that will eventually, will eventually come into the county. I know people don't, you know, they're skeptical about it. They're going to believe the casino when they see it. But I think it's a, a, a pretty certain fact. There is going to be a casino. There is going to be revenue. The county's probably going to realize close to $20 million a year on that. Now, you take that money and you bond it out. Now you're talking about some serious sure. cash that you can put up front. Now the, now the challenge is going to be, how do you take that money, instead of putting it all into one giant project and hope that the benefits trickle down, how do you make targeted investments like the Third Frontier has right. 
that really pay off with real jobs. You and talk growth. about the casino, and a lot of folks are concerned that that uh, development is not going to spill outside the yeah. boundaries of the casino. What are your thoughts on that? I, I think the biggest problem with development in the Cleveland area in the last 30 years has been connectivity. I mean, we have all these great assets, right. but they, they don't necessarily work in concert with each other. Right now, Dan Gilbert and his group, um, they're saying the right things, that right. it's not going to be a silo or a bunker, people drive in, but we know better and leave. Because we know different, because there's no, no uh, casino in the, in the world that, that doesn't build a moat around itself and keep everyone um, inside. I don't know that you're right about that. I mean, there's, there's some that do it more than others. And he's made the commitment, and we just have to make sure we hold his feet to the fire as much as we possibly can. Sure. You've been uh, named in this indictment of Jimmy DeMora as uh, public official number 14. Right. Uh, no wrongdoing, uh, but no. you did take a call from the county commissioner who wouldn't take a call from the commissioner. Uh, but then you right. also returned a call to, to a friend of his who ended up uh, running and operating the Lakewoods Ice Rink here. Right. You're, you're ex-FBI special agent. Right. I mean, right. we would have thought you would know better than to do that. What, what are your thoughts on what did you do right, what did you do wrong? Yeah, I, I, I think I handled it completely the way that I should have. I'll tell you why. First of all, that I took a call from a commissioner, sure. and I've taken a call from every commissioner. And if they're going to recommend that somebody has a proposal, I'm at least going to hear the proposal, which is what I did. And the proposal, you know, the proof is in the pudding. That proposal has saved to date the city of Lakewood over a million dollars. Now, the way that that was different than some of these other things that you've heard about is that we didn't do some secret deal behind the scenes or anything like that. We had public open meetings. We didn't have to have a competitive process. There's things in the paper today about the city of Cleveland, whether or not That's right. some of the processes have been competitive. But you did have a we process. We made sure that we did. We it, did, and we made sure that we had competition for it. And the results speak for themselves. Well, people are concerned that as you move up and if you become the executive, you're going to be you're going to get hit up by a lot of people, people you know, sure your friends, will. business associates, sure political connections. That happens. Should and you it? send them to the process and say, hey, I'm sorry, Jimmy, I can't talk to you about that. I can't take his call. we got to process, have him get in line with everyone well, else. Actually, the way that it worked was basically exactly what it was. I said, if somebody has a proposal, tell them to call City Hall, and then we followed our process. And Actually, not only did we follow the process, we put in extra checks and balances to make sure that it was done right. Look, one of the things that I have an advantage of is I am from. I do have a law enforcement background, right. and I know that people are mentioned in charging documents. That's right. Because they're witnesses. Just like if your car got stolen, you're going to be witnessed in a police right. report. Right. The question is, when you look at all the facts, you look at all the documents, if it was done properly or not. And in this case, it was. But look, it's a political year, and there's people that are going to try to take Absolutely. advantage of it politically, and I, ex I expect that. You're the Democratic nominee, which means you're going to get a lot of Democratic uh, money. How much do you expect you're going to have to run your campaign uh, for executive? A lot less than uh, <laughs> some of my opponents. Look, well, uh, give me a number. What? Because we're we're um, asking. Folks. I will spend. I will probably spend less than. Uh, Four hundred thousand dollars by the time it's all over, and you we already have candidates, by the way, that have already spent spent close well to a million so far. That's right, that's right. But you still are going to owe the Democratic Party. You're going to owe some people some favors after this, isn't that? Isn't that what people are concerned about? Is that it's business as usual with the with the party system here, especially the Democratic Party? How do you assure yeah. voters that this time it's different? That the money right. is not going to, and you know, make you owe them something right. once you get into office? Right, right. Well. Unfortunately, in the United States, we don't have public financing, which I favor, because that to me would be the most honest system. Sure. If people didn't have to rely on contributions. They do. The question is whether they have a personal stake in, in, in what a contributor is, is, is seeking to do. I mean, if you look at Matt Dolan's campaign, for example, he's gotten $430,000 just from the Dolan family. From his family, that's right. Which, which has a, a specific financial interest in the appointments that the county executive will make. I mean, as your, as your viewers may know, the Gateway Development Corporation, three out of the five appointments are appointed, at least in part, by the new county executive. Right. And he has a direct financial influence in there. And That's there's right. no contributor. First of all, I have no personal, unlike Mr. Dolan, I have no personal interest in financial interest in the county's business for the next few years. And my family certainly doesn't as well. And to take $430,000 from a business that you personally have a financial stake in, right and has a stake in your decisions the next four years, that's a true conflict. So there's always going to be contributions. The question is, what's the balance? How do you balance that out? The reason that you're running right now, the reason that the whole county's being overhauled is because issue six passed last uh -huh. fall overwhelmingly by the voters of Cuyahoga County. Right, right. You were not a supporter of that. You were a supporter of the opposing issue uh -huh. five. 
What made you change your mind on this and, and decide, hey, not only is it a good idea, I'd like to run for the position? Right. Well, my position was that we should have a county executive. My concern with issue six was that it didn't have enough checks and balances. I'm still concerned about that. Look, if you take power and you concentrate it into one person, that doesn't mean you're going to have a more honest system. It doesn't mean you're going to have a better system. It, 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 what it means is you'll have an opportunity to do, to do good, but you also have an opportunity um, to have concentrated corruption. And one of the things the new system doesn't, I think, doesn't do a good enough job at is really have an independent, very strong inspector general function to watch the county executive. Because right now, the power structure is going to be out of balance. Would, I'm you, very would you put about something that. like that in place? Absolutely. And I was the first candidate. Some other candidates have now proposed it. I proposed it right out of the box. I said, Great. look, a county executive makes sense because it's an opportunity to show leadership. But if you're not watching that person, sooner or later, we're going to elect the wrong county executive, and we better make sure we don't repeat what we're going through right now. Ed, thanks for taking so much time to I talk with it. us. I know you're busy with your campaign. Great. Thank thanks you so much. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland.